everyone. Welcome back to another integration by parts example. Houston Math Prep here. We're going to look at examples when we choose dv to be simply dx itself. The idea being here, I don't really know the antiderivative. Although this is not really a product rule, uh, there's no other function where you might first look at this and go, oh, this is integration by parts because it's something times something else, and I choose a u and a dv. The idea is really just to choose dv to be dx. We do that when the thing that we're trying to integrate by itself, perhaps, we don't really know its antiderivative, but maybe we easily know its derivative, right? So the idea for this will be that we choose u to be the inverse sign of x because in integration by parts I will then take the derivative of that thing which I should know that formula is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx okay and if that's the case then we just choose dv to be the remaining dx or 1 dx if you want to think of it that way and then what is the antiderivative of 1 dx well it would just be x so we use this idea of only choosing dv to be dx when we want to get around taking the antiderivative of something that we're just not sure about okay so if we use our integration by parts formula uv minus integral v du then that will give us u times v would be x times inverse sine of x minus the integral of v du is going to be the integral of x over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx and then we always get to this point in integration by parts and have to make a decision now further on what is this which is certainly not always I think you can tell the same method as what we did before this is going to work just simply by u substitution so this is a bit different we're not actually doing by parts again here right so in this case we go ahead and let u equal everything under the root 1 minus x squared and then du is going to equal negative 2x dx if you prefer you can go ahead and say well what I really have here is x dx and solve directly for x dx and so then you can see that x dx would be negative one half du that's totally fine if you don't need to do that then don't worry about it all right let's write down what we have then x inverse sine of x so if I have a minus and then I have negative a half I'm gonna go ahead and say plus one half integral du over the square root of u and if we're not sure how to see this last integral here we'll go ahead and give you a little hint and that is that the square root of u is actually a power right it is the one-half power of u and since it's in the denominator it's actually the negative one-half power of u du so we can simply integrate using power rule so we'll say x inverse sine of x plus one half now I add one here so that'll be u to the one half and I divide by the new power so dividing by a half is like multiplying by two right so that's what we'll have there you'll notice that the two and the one half will reduce to one so in this instance when I reduce those and I'll also go back and replace my u right so I'll have u to the one half now remember u to the one half will be the square root of u right so what I had in terms of u originally inside of a square root since we still have that one half power there okay so our answer here is x times inverse sine x plus the square root of one minus x squared plus C. All right, to check out, we have one more example video about using dv equals dx. Very common, dealing with a natural log, something you might use, or something you might have memorized and wonder where it came from. All right, we'll see you in the next video.